Hi, welcome to the unit called Radicals and Rational Exponents. This is lesson two on adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with radicals. So we're going to have these square root symbols, okay? Now let's look at just simplifying a square root for a second. What if you're given the square root of 20? Well, you can evaluate that on your calculator, or you can also, a lot of the times on standardized tests, you need to know what that value is to recognize it in an answer. So we need to be able to break that down. Well, we know that we're looking for perfect squares that are factors of 20. So I'm going to start factoring 20 into a factor tree. So I take 4 times 5, and then 2 times 2 times 2. So you want to get down to these prime factors, okay? I can see that I have two twos, therefore remember, 4 is a perfect square, and the square root of 4 is 2. So when you find a pair, it actually can come outside the radical. So I can take 2 square root 5. And the reason we do that is because 4 is a perfect square. So basically you're taking the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and the square root of 4 comes out as 2. So that's the rationale as to why you have to find a pair, because you're looking for perfect squares. Okay, so there's the square root of 20. Let's try another one of those just to give it another go. Okay, let's say you're taking the square root of 72. Okay, now you could factor this a couple different ways, but I'm just going to do 8 and 9. 8 times 9. Now 8 factors down to 4 and 2, and 9 factors down to 3 and 3, but 4 goes one more time to 2 and 2. So my prime factors are 2 times 2, bring this one down times 2, times 3, times 3. So I actually have 5 factors down here. Now let's pair them up, okay? Remember we're looking for perfect squares, so there's one perfect square and there's another perfect square. So I'm going to take out a 3 and a 2. I don't take both of them out, I just take one, okay? So I take a 2 out and I take a 3 outside the radical and I leave the square root of 2 in, so I have 6 square roots of 2 as my final answer there. Now if you noticed, whoa, I think you can get all the way down there, um, if you noticed you could also take 6 and square it. Okay, to think about going backwards, 6 squared is 36, and 36 times 2 is 72. So just another way to kind of think through that. Okay, so you're, you're always looking for perfect square factors. Now let's look at um, some adding and subtracting with radicals. Okay, adding and subtracting with radicals, you can only add basically the as I call it, the like terms, like, but the two the things that have to be alike are the two um, radicands. So in this case, we have 5 square root 2 plus 6 square root 2. Therefore, the radicands match, and those two values, whatever the decimal value is, matches. So if you have 5 apples plus 6 apples, you have 11 apples, right? So we have 11 square root 2. So it's as simple as that. You're just going to add or subtract our sign number coefficients. So let's look at a second one. What if you have a negative 7 square root 3 minus 12 square root 3? Okay, these two radicands match, therefore we can just combine the coefficients. So negative 7 minus 12 is negative 19 root 3, and there's our answer. Okay, so that's how you add and subtract radicands. Now let's go back and look at multiplying, okay? Actually, let me do one more adding. But this time I'm going to give you a radicand or adding in a little different form. Sometimes you'll see them like this. The square root of 8 plus 5 square root 2 plus, um, let's say we have square root of 18, okay? So, can we add these radicands together? And the answer is no, not in this form. But notice 8 and 18 are both um, composite numbers. So I'm going to take 8 and 18 and break those down. So 8 becomes 2 times 2 times 2. So since I'm taking the square root, I'm going to take a pair out. So I have 2 square roots of 2 plus 5. So let's just bring that plus 5 root 2 down. Now let's take 18. 18 breaks down to 9 times 2, or 3 times 3 times 2. Again, I have a pair. Okay, so I'm going to take a 3 out, 
right? And I have a square root of 2 left. So now our radicands match, so now I can combine the coefficient. So 2 plus 5 is 7, and 7 plus 3 is 10, so that's going to be 10 square roots of 2, okay? So this little mess just simplified to 10 square root 2. So that's how you add. You always want to break down your radicals into the uh, smallest form. Okay, let's talk about multiplying, okay? When you multiply to um, radicands, we do not need to have like radicands, okay? We can just multiply. And I have this rule that I always say outside times outside, inside times inside, okay? So whatever is outside the radical, we can multiply the coefficients. What is it ever inside the radical? We can multiply together, okay? So let's take that. We have 4 and 3 are our coefficients. So we multiply the outside times the outside. So that gives me 12. Okay, and now I'm going to multiply the inside. Okay, I have a 2 and I have a 6, so I'm going to multiply. Oh, that's also 12. Okay, I have 12 square roots of 12. Okay, am I done? No, I'm not, because remember, 12 is a not uh, prime number. It's composite, and we know that it multiplies to either, you can either break it back down to 6 and 2 or 4 and 3. It doesn't matter, but what you're doing is you're trying to get down to the prime factors and find your pairs. Okay, so the square root of 12 breaks down to 2 times 2 times 3. I can take, there's a pair, I, so I take a 2 out. Now I take 2 out, but I already had a 12, so what do I do with that? I multiply them. So I take 12 times the 2 I'm bringing out, and then what's left in there? The square root of 3 is left. It didn't have a pair to come out with. So I'm going to leave that square root of 3 in. So I'm going to take 2 times 12, and I get 24 square root 3. So that's what that one simplifies to. Okay? So that's multiplying. And what's the rule? The rule is outside times outside, inside times inside. So let's try one more of those. Okay, let's take uh, a negative 6 square root 3. Make sure you have this on my screen times 5 square root 6. Okay, let's multiply that together. What do we get? Negative 30 outside times outside. Let's do the inside times the inside. Square root of 18. Okay, and the square root of 18 is going to break down to, whoops, let's just do 9 times 2. And 9 is a perfect square. 3 times 3 times 2. So I found a pair and so a 3 comes out. I already had 30 out there, so I'm going to have to multiply it by 3, and I'm going to get what? Negative 90. So negative 30 times 3 is negative 90. What's left? That square root of 2 is what's left. So there you go. That's how you would multiply those together and simplify. Okay, let's look at another one of those, but that, let's look at this time at division. Okay? We're going to take like the square root of 14, divided by the square root of 2. Okay, one of the no-no's in math is you can never leave a radical in the denominator, so we need to clean this up. Now I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Okay, remember the rule we had outside times outside and inside times inside. Same rule applies when you're dividing because that's the same type of operation. If it's outside, you can divide it by an outside. If it's inside, you can, um, whoops, inside, you can divide it by an inside, the radical. So since these two are both inside the radical, I can actually just divide those. Okay, so I can take uh, 14 divided by 2, and the answer has to remain inside the radical. So that ends up being the square root of 7. 